grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, we're continuing in our theme, and uh, we've discussed a variety of different things. One, we talked about how our confession must include an honest recognition of some bad news that's in this world, sin, death, separation from God. Um, that's the source, really. That's the source of all that's wrong in life, and we want this to be clear. We want to be upfront about this. And yet, the heart of the gospel is good news, right? That's what gospel means, good news. It's the good news that God has come to save us through the life, death, and resurrection of his pro and the promised return of his son, Jesus. Together, this bad news and good news is the truth of the gospel. Uh, last week, um, we considered these things by thinking about the theme of captivity and freedom. Uh, we, took a, we took seriously the imprisoning power that sin can have over our lives, and we rejoice that God has won freedom for us in Jesus. Hopefully, got your creative juices flowing a little bit. And tonight, we're going to continue working together by examining another prominent biblical theme. We'll talk about life and death. And as we did last week, I'll ask for some readers and ask for you to invite some of your thoughts and reflections or reactions. Um, and we, are, we have these answers saved up. If, we, if you ever want to reference back to them, they're saved on the slide, so... Um, We've, we've got, or if you have your notes, this would be a good time for, for using those pens if you want to use those. Um, and after tonight, we'll have even more to work off. So let's start um, quickly with rereading our, um, our reading from, uh, from le uh, our gospel lesson for today. And for this one, I'll read it and ask for some volunteers later. Now, when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, but Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give to you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. That's a pretty good introduction, I think, as we talk about life and death and what Jesus has to say. Uh, but let's now let's talk about it um, a little bit. Um, we've all been touched by death in our lives. It might not be the most comfortable subject, um, but it's good to know that our Lord hears us and has something to say to us. When you hear the word death, what's the first word or that comes to mind? What words come to mind when you hear? Eternity. Okay. Separation. Separation. Yeah, that's a good one. Claire. Sin. Okay. Mike. Sadness. Yeah. Yeah. Done. One more. Like you're not here anymore. Okay. Yeah. Gone. Maybe would be one word to sub that up. Um, the scriptures speak of death as our final enemy. What makes death so awful? As a... Done. If you have, like, a loved one, like, you can't see them anymore. Yeah. Until you, or you get resurrected by Jesus. Yeah. Hmm? What's that? Absent one from another, yeah. Yeah. It's it's painful. It's Okay. Yeah. Get angry sometimes when we get in 
in trouble and um, let's go to our, our next question. When you consider death, what words to, um, describe your thoughts and feelings? It's, maybe this is a, um, when you consider your own death, what would Britain? Yeah, hard to wrap your head around that, yeah. Hmm? Heaven. Heaven, that's a good one, yeah. I'd be confused because it wouldn't be, because if I died, like, then I would, it would be, like, blank, like, there's no, like, like, blank, blank, blank. Blank, so yeah. Nothing. Okay, anger, you know, yeah, so when you think about dying, yeah, or worried, yeah, those are things we probably both could feel, we could feel that way when we, um, so that's a little intense, um, but let's transition uh, to what our Lord says and to hit to his words of comfort. So um, some people suggest that death is simply the natural course of this world, but that it's just, it's inevitable. But what does Paul say about it? Let's, could I have a volunteer read uh, this verse from Romans chapter 6? All right. The wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Right, that's, as a, we'll have, we'll have more later. Can you, um, can you think of some people, as we think about life and death, can you think of some people from the Bible who were raised from the dead? All right, well, Claire, <laughs> Okay, when Elijah, yeah, Elijah, the widow, the widow's son from Elijah, that Elijah meant. Okay, well, that was a, that was a reading for today, right? Lazarus, Jairus's daughter, yeah, and then there's the there's this Britain, Jesus, that's yeah, yeah, <laughs> can't forget that one, yeah, then um, there's the. The pastor's, maybe the pastor's least favorite one, the guy who's listening to Paul preaching and he falls out the window and dies, but then he gets revived. You know, so there's, there's a little bit more of a hidden one. Uh, any other? Any other? Um, there's the widow's son at Nain who Jesus heals. And um, there's the... Uh, there's a, there's a couple others. There's the one who, there's Elisha's, Elisha, the prophet Elisha has been buried and an enemy army is invading and these guys are burying someone and they just quick throw him in Elisha's, uh, uh, in where Elisha's bones are. And when it touches Elisha's bones, the guy raises back to dead or back to life. You know, there's, there's, a, there's, there's some other ones too, but we'll, we'll, we won't get too carried away. But there's multiple times where we see uh, being raised from the dead. Uh, won't go too much further, but most, of the, most, most other religions that I'm aware of don't even claim something like that. I mean, if Christianity is lying, it's pretty audacious in its claims. Um, we're going to go on to our next one, and I'll ask for more volunteers. Um, but uh, I do need some volunteers for reading different line. All right, Claire will do one. Go ahead, read the top one. Can you read it? So this is a, these are our questions. So does anybody, who said, whose line is it? Who said that? Jesus? I, okay, correct. You got Jesus. How about, can I have a volunteer read the next one? Say, same answer. Yeah, I have come that they may have life. And Don, read the last one. Yeah, so it's a trick, trick question. The idea is Jesus is, is the way, the truth, and the life. He's, he has something to say about life, and not only that, he brings us life. Um, uh, uh, Jesus has a lot to say about this, and he's the one who can stop death. He's the one who has defeated life. He gives life. He is life. And here's what St. Paul 
tells us about Jesus' life, death, uh, and resurrection. Could I have a volunteer that's a little longer? A volunteer, go away from my... All right, Marie? Yeah, go for it. All right, thank you. So uh, one of the things I think that we talked about is that makes death so, um, is the, what feels like the finality, the end, you know. Um, but what is there that is more certain than death? Taxes? <laughs> Yeah, God's love, life in Christ. Yeah, that, you know, if, Clara, yeah? Come back to you for another one if you lost it. Um, yeah, that, yes? Okay, forgiveness, yeah. And that's what, you know, if you kill a guy and he comes back, what else can you do with him? You know, right? That's Jesus. You kill him, and he comes back anyway. Well, there's nothing more. You, you've done everything you can, and yet he's back again. You know, and that's uh, the victory that Jesus has because you can't, you can't beat somebody who keeps coming back to life. You know, you, you just can't beat them. And that's, you know, uh, the hope and the life that we have um, in Christ. When will death be destroyed? When Jesus comes back, when he comes. Yeah, so on the last day, in a sense, it's already been destroyed, um, but now for all, death will die um, when Jesus comes back, and there'll be, Revelation says, there will be no more dying, you know, and that's what the great victory that we have in Christ, because death says there'll be no more living, but Jesus says, no, no, there will be no more dying, uh, and that's a great hope that we get to Offer, um, offer to the world. Um, as we wait for Jesus re to return and raise us back to life immortal, uh, we continue, and, and life is not always perfect. It's sometimes the valley of the shadow of death. But in the meantime, God has made some promises to us. And so a couple more scripture verses. Uh, if I could get some volunteers to... All right, Becky, thank you. Thank you. And um, the next one, oh, I'm bad at going, I don't know how to go back. Could you go back one part? Thanks. Um, all right, Clara. Yeah, so long list there. I'm sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And then one more. Donovan. Revelation chapter 24, verse 4 says, He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death will be no more. Neither shall there be mourning. Yeah, it will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more, neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. Those are some worthwhile promises for us to, to hold on to. Um, Psalm 118 talks about these things as well, and maybe you didn't know, I didn't really know, that Psalm 118, I would have guessed a different, like Psalm 46, uh, but Psalm 118 was 
perhaps Luther's favorite psalm. At least one place he said this was his favorite psalm. This is my own beloved psalm, he said. Although the entire Psalter and all of the Holy Scriptures are dear to me as my only comfort and source of life, I fell in love with this psalm especially. Therefore, I call it my own. Uh, it's psalm 118, verse 17. Luther's personal motto in life was verse 17 in that psalm. And some historians even say that he had it carved onto the wall of his study. Um, we're not sure for certain, but tells you something, even if that's uh, an apocryphal story. And Psalm 118, verse 17 says, I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. And brothers and sisters in Christ, take heart. I shall not die, but live and recount the deeds of our Lord. And in fact, let's, let's all read it together like a responsive read. We'll just, we'll read it all together. We've, I've read it and now let's read it together on the count of three. One, two, three. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. And that's good news. And that's the gospel of Christ. That's what we confess. In Jesus' name, amen.